Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another video here on the Brian's Law Maintenance YouTube channel. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we're going to do a little webinar series today with Cycle CPA. A lot of you guys know Joseph and Carla. They do bookkeeping uh, for lawn care landscaping professionals. Great asset, great resource out there in the lawn care community. Uh, we don't have a pitch or anything like that for you guys today. All we want to do is help you guys out with knowing your numbers, uh, understanding a little bit more with bookkeeping, helping you guys learn the X's and O's to have a successful lawn care landscaping business. So maybe pull up a uh, you know a bowl of popcorn and uh, hang out with us for the next half hour, or feel free to revisit this video later uh, if you want to learn more about uh, how to run a profitable business. But uh, first off, appreciate you guys joining in. But number two, thank you to Carla and Joseph for hopping on here and doing this presentation. So guys, welcome to the show. How are you guys doing today? Good. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Brian. I'm excited for this. Yeah. How's, uh, by the way, how's bookkeeping season and tax season going for you guys? I'm sure you guys have been busy, busy people. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Getting everybody caught up for, uh, for their taxes and everything, but it's been good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, awesome, Joseph. How's people's uh, reception uh, that have been signing up with Cycle CPA for uh, for bookkeeping services? Uh, I know you guys are growing like crazy. Yeah, no, it's 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 been awesome. You know, I think one of the things that's that's nice about you know signing on, especially not only during tax season, is that you're able to you know kind of have the numbers you know to file file taxes. It isn't you know maybe that that large catch up where you have to get your books caught up and. Um, you know, you can focus more your energy on planning for, for the upcoming year. Amen to that. Yeah. I, I used to be the shoebox full of receipts guy. Uh, my friend, Mike Bedell took me under his wing, um, gosh, five years ago. And he said, Hey, like there's some things that you should probably be focusing on. And I was a very, what we would call front of the house guy. Uh, I love the mowing, the, you know, slinging of mulch, uh, plowing snow. I was not a very big, um, uh, focuser, if that's a word, on the back end of the office, which was like my QuickBooks, my accounting, my PL, and looking at the actual numbers, like what were we actually doing here as business owners? I was a really good uh, self employed, basically, technician. Uh, I was not a very business minded business owner. And so uh, along the way, hiring some bookkeepers have helped Liz and I more than we could ever relate or or have the vocabulary to explain uh it's been a game changer and you guys are doing the same thing out there for so many so thank you guys for all the work and dedication you guys are putting into the community and helping people really get a grasp on their business and so uh so what do we got going on uh who's, who's taking lead is it carla or joseph on this one but what do we got going on today yeah so we're gonna be you know really trying to take some of the experience we have from working with over 200 companies within the green industry and, you know, looking at the financials and, you know, trying to pass on some of that guidance over to, over to, you know, your, your community here. So. Cool. Well, it's, it's all you brother. We'll, uh, I'll let you take it away and uh, I'll stop jibber jabbering, you know? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, and uh, so, you know, why, why should you be taking the time to, you know, review some of these items with us today? You know, and, and, and why should you think about prioritizing accounting? You know, it's it's an unbiased view of looking at the performance of your company. You know, instead of your your employees thinking about, OK, why why didn't I receive a raise or or a bonus or something like that? You know, you have these these firm numbers to to go by and, and to help in some of those some some of those very difficult decisions that you have to make as a business owner, because those those decisions do do come up, um, especially if you're looking to grow your company, whether you're looking to invest in equipment, um, you know, what, what goes into that decision? Do you have the reserve capital? You know, maybe it's two times operating expenses, um, you know, set aside, you know, are you over leveraged, uh, you know, when it comes to loans, thinking about stuff like that and having the numbers to look at, which Carl will get deeper into as well into the presentation. And we're, we're, we're towards the beginning of the year here, you know, thinking about budgeting and planning. That's a that's a big aspect of being able to remain profitable throughout the year and recover your overhead expenses and other expenses that you incur. Um, you know, also adjusting your your estimates. Estimating is a, is a really important. Really important aspect of running a profitable green industry business. And having the financials helps to 
kind of complete the loop where you can take that data and then roll it back into your estimates based on what you're seeing on the financials. You know, maybe you're looking to go to the bank to get a loan, you know, be being able to, you know, show professionalism and show show that bank or show an investor that, you know, you, this this is a business. It's not just a hobby for you. You know, for for tax time audits, you know, these are these are all things that, you know, the, this is the reality of business and growing a business. And, um, you know, you don't want to be scrambling when when these different items come. You want to be prepared to make these kind of decisions. And what it starts with is, you know, and I, I know the term knowing your numbers is thrown around a lot. Right. But it's it's really understanding first your your financial statements. And with that, it starts with your profit and loss statement. Some people may refer to income statement. And it basically shows all the revenues and expenses that, that, that your business incurs. So it starts with your top line revenue, which is great. And that's something you want to track and, and you want to understand where, where that is trending. But just that alone, it doesn't tell you everything that you need to know about your business, right? So you, you need to look at your expenses and, Really, what what's taken away first when you're looking at the profit and loss statement is your cost of sales. Um, you you may have heard in terms of COGS or cost of goods sold, and these are the expenses that are directly correlated to you performing the work in the field. So it's the materials that that you're purchasing for that specific job. It's every employee in the field that's actually touching the stone or they're actually the ones doing the lawn mowing. Um, you know, it's 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 all of those expenses. And then the result, when when you minus that from your revenue, is your gross profit. And a typical gross margin goal is anywhere between 50 to, to 55% of, of your total revenue. And after your gross profit, um, Unfortunately, that's not what your profit is, right? Because there, there's still more expenses, and this is something that that you can't forget. Especially, um, you know, and and this is something that we see as a common misconception of, you know, what what is your profit? You know, if you if you ask your business owner friend, you know, what their profit is, they may say it's forty percent, but are they accounting for some of those other expenses? And those other expenses are overhead expenses, right? So it's it's everything that isn't directly correlated with you producing the work in the field. So it's your marketing expenses, insurance, um, it's your accounting team, um, dues and subscriptions, different things like that. And, and then your result is your net profit. So can I, can yeah. I interject really quick? Cause this gets me really like fired up. Um, so the first two or three blocks there, I, I'm, if you guys are, if this is a foreign language to you, I get it. It was for me for a long time. Um, but the first chunk, the cost of sales and your gross profit, that's like after you do that 15 yard mulch job, what did you make net uh, gross profit from the mulch job? What did you make after the labor, the delivery fees and the costs of the mulch? Right, Joe? And then yeah. then you have. So that's like Pac-Man number one, right? Like after all those expenses eat from that gross revenue number, that's what you have is gross profit. Now, that's not all there is, right? Because we have the insurance of the company, the the vehicles, um, salaries. That's that's Pac-Man number two that's going to eat away again at that gross profit number, right? Then you're left with your true net profit. And so when guys are saying like, hey, I made uh, 50% on that mulch job, you did on the mulch job, but once you factor that mulch job into the, the total pie, of all the work you're doing for your company, don't be surprised to see that number dwindle from 50% down to 10 to 25% pretty quickly. There's a lot of cost that goes into running a business. And when you're a small owner operator running out of your garage, you might be able to realize higher profit margins. But once you start getting a shop or an overhead or an office admin or a company phone and general liability insurance and workers comp, like that overhead expense <laughs> It's it can be a chunk. Yeah, absolutely. It it can be anywhere between 30, 20 to thirty percent of of total revenue. Okay, um, sure. And, yep. Yeah, and 
you know, one one might say, you know, why, why do we need to break things down so much, right? Why can't maybe I just know my net profit or my gross margin? But the problem becomes is as a company scales and you you face potential cash flow issues or your profits aren't necessarily where you want them to be, how can you as a business owner then go back into your business and make changes and know where you need to make the changes? You know, mm. is is this a problem more in my cost of sales category with maybe the material expense or the employees in the field? Or is or am I facing more of an administrative inefficiencies and different things like that in the office? So it just helps to, you know, really separate that for, for Yeah. Well, one quick thing before we go to the next slide is if I can give you guys some encouragement out there, here's something that I learned along the way. It was do a job cost or do an autopsy on the previous job you just did. Like Okay, so you did that 30 or 40 yard mulch job. Uh, you installed mulch at $125 a yard. Uh, you had your tractor rental for the day for 200 bucks. You had four guys on site. You got $160, $180 in labor per guy. Uh, of course, the cost of the mulch. So your you know, $5,000 mulch job might net you $2,600. I mean, that's a, that's a decent day. But like, do you know where you came in on cost and profit? Like, so go back and revisit that last job before you just say, hey, I got a 20-yard mulch job, a 10-yard mulch job, or I'm mowing a lawn, I'm mowing a lawn, I'm mowing a lawn. Like on a $45 cut, do you know what you make in actual profit off that lawn? And these are important things to know. Like if you want to be here for five years, 10 years, 25 years, I will assure you in one way, shape, or form, this will catch up with you. I literally almost like spun myself out of business after 11 years because I did not know how to make profit in my company. And I, I can't be more sincere. Like this stuff matters. I wish more people talked about it. But this is not stuff that you do typically like eight to five income producing activities when you're getting the job done. This is the autopsy stuff that you do late night, nights and weekends, Saturday mornings, uh, maybe you schedule a day a week. So please don't just go, you, you, you will not outwork the problem. Can I just say that? That's the last thing I'll say. Like yeah. you will not outwork the problem to become profitable. It just doesn't work that way. So please don't do what I did for a decade thinking you'll just, because you're a hard worker, we're all hard workers that you'll just out earn the problem. It it does not work that way. Typically in business, you have to know your numbers and work hard. Right. So, um, just a little soapbox, Joe, sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but yeah, I, no, I, yeah, you yeah, know, I, I, I totally agree, Brian. And, and, and I think that's a, um, you know, that that's, that's a common reoccurring, um, problem that, that we see within business owners where you kind of get to that point where just doing more volume, doing more work, working harder is not going to patch up the problems. No. Nope. I, I haven't seen it work. So yeah. if anything, if anything, the problems that were there become magnified. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, but it's it, what what I kind of see is some some business owners experience that that thought when they're just starting out for others, it could take longer. Right. But it's just a matter of time. And 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 that's what we see. Um, but, you know, and in in this example, you know, just to kind of go off of some some of those terms that that we had learned in the last slide, you know, what what is um, you know, B in this example? It's your it's your overhead expenses, right? So just something definitely to, you know, one of the major things to kind of take away from this presentation. Moving on to your balance sheet, Joe kind of just went over the profit and loss. Uh your balance sheet could be a little bit of more complex statement to understand for business owners, especially looking at it for the first time. Um, and, it, but it's an important document because it shows you the value of your business, right? As be, being a business owner, you want to make sure you're getting a return on your investment and your return should be high because having a business is risky. All that sweat equity that you put in all that time, you just want to make sure that you're making the most of, of your time, right? And getting that investment back. So by analyzing the balance sheet, that's what it's going to tell you, right? That's that's where you'll find those answers. Um, so think of it as a house, right? You purchase your house and that's your asset. 
right? And it's it's worth something, but you have li you have a liability. You pay your mortgage on it, right? Your mortgage could be uh, three hundred thousand dollars for thirty years, and you pay you know your monthly down payment on it. And then you, I'm sorry, you have you have your monthly payment, but you also have your down payment that you initially made on it, which is your initial investment. And that's what we call equity, right? In in your home. The balance sheet kind of works out the same way, right? You have your equity in, in the balance sheet, you have your assets uh, and your liabilities. So let's um, look at that further here. By the way, um, quick little interjection. Just the other day, we got approved for the financing for a pole barn build uh, a little yesterday. Mm -hmm. And yeah, su <laughs> super. Awesome. <laughs> Super excited about it, like home run, everything's going good. Uh, but of course, what did our lady ask for? Uh, her name's Courtney, awesome girl. She goes, hey, can you send me the uh, tax returns if you got them for the company? Uh, and then she also said, can you send me the balance sheet? And I said, I've got both. I said, yes, ma'am. And it took her less than a day to sift through that, to realize that, you know, thank God, but of course, you know, that we're approved uh, for the uh loan that we're trying to take out for the pole barn. But yeah. five years ago, I would have said, Courtney, I have no idea. And <laughs> I would have said, I've got a shoebox full of receipts. But that's not going to help you guys when you're trying to buy your next truck or get a barn or like Carla said, try to get a mortgage for a home. It's it's very, very important stuff. I don't want to nerd out on you guys, but this is really, really important stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean you see the assets that that Brian has in his business over there, all, all cool with the trailer and the mowers and stuff. That's that's what we see in the balance sheet, right? And and that's your assets. So in the asset section, you're going to have your bank accounts, right? And basically, your assets are things that are going to benefit the business. So what's working for you, right? So your bank accounts, your checking, your savings, that's all benefiting the business um, in the short term, right? Every day you're using uh, that cash. And then long term, your fixed assets, which is things that are going to benefit the business for more than one year. Like Brian has his trailer. He's going to keep that for the next seven, 10 years. Right. Um, and and your truck, your mowers, all of those items that are going to help you produce revenue, make a net profit for the business. That's why those are considered assets that brings up the value in your business. Right. Um, and and that's very important in a landscaping business because we have so much assets to take care of and that we need to keep track of making sure we're utilizing it to produce that profit because there's so much investment up front with that. You all know um, kind of getting the the loans with Sheffield and Ford and all of that. It's it's um, a huge investment. Right. So. The next thing is liability. So a lot of the time when you purchase that mower, you need to finance it, right? Um, through a loan, through Sheffield, stuff like that. So that is what you owe to others is your liabilities. Um, so that's where you'll see all of your uh, Sheffield, your board, financial, all of those loans um, that are due in the long term, right? For more than one year, maybe you're paying it off over five years. And you also have your current liabilities like credit cards that you just play monthly. That's why that's in the current section, your payroll liabilities, because that also you're paying monthly, stuff like that. We um, just we just had payroll go. I literally before we jumped on was checking Chase Bank, checking my business accounts, saw payroll process. I'm like, oh, it's just it's just funny seeing the you know the the cash flow, which and then I went over to Yardbook and I was looking at all of our invoices, making sure everybody's um my accounts receivable is on time, nobody's um, delinquent, which tomorrow is a new month. So um, a couple of people uh, are going to be running at Redline and then we'll send out some reminders. But that's that's why you got to keep up on all this stuff, right? Like uh, money in, money out. And hopefully, right, there's some profit left over. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And um, lastly, you have your equity section. And that's the value of the business. That's your stake in the business. And what you want to see is that your equity goes up. So what are things that increase the equity, the value of the business? It's producing a profit year over year. Once you produce those profits, that gets dumped into your equity and it keeps accumulating over time. So if this year is your first year, uh, last year, let's say is your first year of being in business and you made 50,000 in profit, 
that gets dumped into your equity. This year you make another 50,000. Now all of a sudden your equity becomes $100,000 in the business, right? Um, so that's that's what we can do to keep increasing that. And some things that decrease your equity, which is not good, right, is losses, which is normal. With the first couple of years that you're in business is normal, but usually by the third, uh, fourth year, you want to start turning a profit, right, to kind of uh, wash those losses out. Um, and another thing is owner's draws. So if you're missing, if you're mixing personal expenses in your business bank account, it's going to get dumped into your equity and it's going to lower that value. This right. is good. That's good. Um, one quick interjection. If, uh, if this is all again, foreign language to you guys, or even if it's something that you guys want to learn more about, uh, really good book out there. I personally like it. Um, I won't speak for Carl and Joseph, but, um, rich dad, poor dad by Robert Kiyosaki, such a great read. It's such an easy read. Um, a friend of mine put that in my hands when I was 18 or 19 years old, and it literally fundamentally changed the way I looked at how to make money and business. I mean, honestly, it fundamentally changed because I was a blank slate. <laughs> so it was the first time somebody put something like good in, like garbage in, garbage out. Well, if you put good in, you'll get good out. So if you guys are looking to, um, I'm not going to give a whole pitch on the book, but if you're trying to understand finance, uh, financial literacy, and some of these terms, asset, liability, equity, um, balance sheet, start with that book. There's some really good visual di uh, diagrams in there, whatever they call it. I'm telling you, it's a fantastic read. Um, it's 20 bucks on Amazon, story form book. You can literally power through it in two, three hours. Um, uh, do you guys, have you guys ever read that book? Do you guys like that book? Yes. Yeah, I like yeah, it's, it. it's yeah, a, the audio it's a classic. <laughs> it's, it's it's a classic. It's definitely I, a must read. I, yeah. I, I I was trying to read some stats on it the other day. I think he sold like 30 or 40 million copies. Like wow. I, I published a book, um, zero to one hundred K, and we talk a lot about this these things in some of the chapters. Um, and we're selling like, you know, two or three copies a day. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> And I told Liz, I was just having breakfast this morning. I told Liz, I'm like, can you imagine selling like 10,000 copies of your book a day or something like that? Like I, maybe more. I It's just wild to me, but it's a great book. It's an easy read. And um, that's why it's a bestseller. So any which way, uh, let's keep it going. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. Um, no, and this is funny that this slide came up right now. I mean, yesterday I was talking with a business owner and he kept asking me, he said, you know, do, does my profit look good? My margin look good? And he asked me a couple of times, he said, yeah, yeah, it looks good. And then we move over to the balance sheet analysis. And I said, but, he, but he's like, you, my profits look good, but my bank account only increased by $900 from year over year. What, what is that? Why did that happen? And then it kind of clicked to me. He, he was, he was saying my profit and loss looks great. You know, your profits, you're making you're making profits there, but then your bank account balance doesn't add up to it, right? And sure. I get that question all the time. Um, so that's where I'll try to break down here in the next few slides. But um, really, you, you want to look at your statement of cash flow, which is the third uh, financial statement. So we went through the profit and loss balance sheet. Uh, the third one is statement of cash flows. And what this shows you is the money that came into your business bank account and the money that left your business bank account. And it reconciles all that for you back to your ending balance in your checking account, which is, you know, great because it really shows you what you spent the money on. And um, there are three sections in the statement of cash flows. There's cash flow, money that came in and out due to operating activities. So what that is, is what you were saying, Brian, the accounts receivable that you're receiving from your clients, right? Collections, um, your accounts payable, money that's coming out for your overhead expenses, um, cost of goods sold, materials, stuff like that. So that's the first section and what it will show you. Uh, the second section is cash flow from investing activities. So what that means is it's showing you the money that you spent on mowers, trucks, trailers, on your fixed assets. Um, so the third section is the cash flow from financing activities. So this shows you the money that you spent on loans that you owe to others. So your Sheffield, your Ford loans, 
that's where you'll see all of that. And it kind of reconciles all that for you. And then at the end, like I said, you'll get your ending balance in your bank account. But um, kind of to con continue the story here with, with that uh, business owner, it turns out that first he, he didn't pay himself a salary on the books. So no W-2 wage. So that's why the profit looks so good because he wasn't paying himself. And then when we go to the balance sheet, we see that he was taking all those owner's draws out. So he was kind of running his personal expenses, his mortgage. He was taking some ATM withdrawals. And you can see that a huge portion of the money he was taking out of the business. And, you know, I said, I said to him, you need to get on a W-2 because we need to have a clear view of what your actual profit is. Because at the end of the day, when we did a quick calculation, he broke even for the whole year. So after he took his salary, right, through owner's draws, there was no money left in, in the business. So in essence, he didn't make any profit. Well, okay. So let me, let me double down on that. Cause I get that quite a bit on coaching calls. Uh, it's one of my favorite topics to, to help people really shift gears mentally. So <clears throat> a lot of guys are like, well, I made 30% profit in my business last year. And I'm like, fantastic. I said, well, how did you pay yourself or how much did you pay yourself? And they'll say, well, I took about 250 bucks out every week or 400 bucks out every week just to, you know, pay for some food, groceries, rent, mortgage, whatever I needed. And I say, okay, well, I said, how much did you pay yourself like as a salary, like as a business owner for owning the business and running the business? And typically they say none. I say, okay, well, let's say that to live your life and expenses, it was $30,000 a year. Um, it can be more, it can be less. This is where really dialing that in with a bookkeeper and really a CPA can help you with understanding where you need things to look based on your lifestyle and what your financial strategy is now and for the, maybe the next couple of years. And there's a lot in between what I just said there. So talk to your CPA. Okay. <laughs> when you start talking, like there's a statement out there, like if in accounting, you can make two plus two equal four, you can make two plus two look like 22. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep this broad and high level, but there's some things in there I'm saying off the record. Okay. Like what I, what I want to convey though, really quickly is if you have 30% profit, but you didn't pay yourself a salary, uh, you didn't have 30% profit. Okay. So like what Carla is also trying to say without being mean is let's add a $30,000 or whatever you need, right? To pay yourself a reasonable salary. By the way, I get this question all the time too. Sorry to go rabbit hole to rabbit hole, but welcome to my content. But a reasonable salary, best I understand it, and this is the tough technical definition, but I'm just putting an asterisk there. This isn't financial advice, but you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary that would cover your family's life expenses. So if you need 70 grand a year and you're paying yourself 30 grand on salary and 40 grand on distributions, although that's not awful, that's a good strategy, um, you may get bit. You might be susceptible to an audit. You, you, I, I'm all about shoring your life up with distributions and owner's draws, but the core expenses of your life's uh, to run your family, a uh, household has to come from a salary. So don't let anybody tell you that otherwise. And that's Brian's law maintenance on the record. Okay. So pay yourself a 30, 40, $50,000 your salary, then talk to your CPA about distributions and owner's draw and how to maybe mitigate some of your tax liability. Okay. Again, not financial advice, but again, all the time, Carla, like you were just saying, you get people that say, well, you have a 30 or 40% margin. And I said, well, did you pay yourself 30 grand a year or 20 grand a year or 40 grand a year? Once they factor that back in, they realize their profit margin is 2%, 5%, 7%, 10%. 10%. And, and then some guys are like, well, I hear other high-level CRMs do trainings saying a 10% profit margin, true net profit is pretty healthy. And they say, well, I smoke that by 30 or 40%. I'm like, great job. Uh, but did you pay yourself a salary? Are you doing it the right way? Right. That's all I'm just trying to say. And so um, don't be confused. There's a lot of information out there, but I'm trying to connect some dots out there for some not not misinformation, just not the full context of what we're trying to do. And that's why we're doing this webinar today and hopefully more in the future. So anyway, um, Carla, do you have any thoughts you want to add on that? I, I'm just trying to clear up uh, some 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 gray area out there that I see some fog out there, maybe for some people. Oh, that's perfect.
Cool. By the way, hopefully that was all off the record, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And ultimately, you know, as, as a business owner, you want to be paying yourself for the work that you're performing in the business, but also think about it also in terms of if, if you as the business owner had to go into the market and find someone to, to fill your role, what would you have to pay them? Yes. And if your goal is to ultimately, you know, leave the field, right. And maybe work more on the business, you know, those are all things that, you know, you should be thinking about now because ultimately you will have to eventually hire someone to, you know, take up a lot of those. And um, if, if you're not doing things as Brian mentioned, where, where you are accounting for your salary now, then, you know, in the future, when you do make that move, it's, it's going to be pretty, pretty evident. Um, That, that was my biggest mistake. My first decade (laughs) is I thought I was free labor. I, (laughs) I, I was like, I was like, your guy is cutting the lawn for 40 bucks, man. I can do it for 25. After all, I'm free labor. Like I thought that's what you did. I, it's so glaringly obvious, but, um, that's not the right approach as you guys can imagine. But I was like, man, I don't have the same overhead as these guys. They have a a shop. I was running it out of my mom's shed. Once you really start factoring all these things in, that's why the price of lawns has to be. 45, 50, 55 bucks, not this 20, $25 stuff. And again, I'm just trying to save you guys. Like we always say, begin with the end in mind. You'll, re- you'll realize this getting baptized by fire one way or another. It might take you one year, it might take you 10 years. Um, but you will realize eventually like this stuff has to be uh, factored in. And then all of a sudden you'll go, oh my God, like that's why lawn should be $45 a mo. And then you'll go all these darn $20 guys. And it's like, it's like the industry 101. It just, it's, uh, I was there. I was that guy. And, um, any which way, Carla, you, you look like you're excited to say something to correct me. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> so, but does that make sense to you guys? Like, that's, Absolutely. I want to help you guys out. So, all right, yeah, Carla, you, you can keep going. Sorry for the, all the interruptions. No, no, it was good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, we can move on. All right. So, kind of to break this down a little bit for, further in, really to show you all why the three financial statements are important to review, not just the profit and loss. We're going to compare these two companies side by side here. Uh, We have company A on the left, company B on the right. And if if I were to ask you all by looking at their net profit, you know, which, which company do we believe that is performing better financially? you know, you all would say company A, 15% profit, right? Um, but, you know, it there's more of a story to tell, right? When we go through all of the uh, the financials. So let's let's visit the uh, balance sheet. So company A is on, on the left with the 15% profit, company B on the, on the right with the 12% profit. Let's go down the balance sheet. So we have the assets here and you can see that Remember, we spoke about that's your trucks, your trailers, your your uh, checking savings account. You can see that company A has more assets uh, than company B does, right? And then as far as liabilities, you can see that A is is has more liabilities. They owe more to, to others, right? They have more loans and stuff like that. Um, but they also have a little bit more equity, right? More value in the business. But really, I mean, looking at these numbers is not going to tell you too much comparing this side by side. What you need to do is you need to take these numbers and calculate some balance sheet metrics, right, or or KPIs. So the first one is return on fixed assets. So what that tells us is how much net profit is your mower, your truck, your trailer producing for your business? And that's a big one, guys, because, again, like I said, you're making a lot of investment in these big purchases, but it's worth nothing if it's not really producing a profit for you, right? If you're not utilizing it the correct way. And so this metric is going to tell you that. And um, we have a we have a little uh, cheat sheet for you all that we sent to Brian and he'll send it out to you guys with all those formulas and stuff if you want it. But um, right here, we can see that company B 2.25 right? Um, it, it, they're producing, they're, they're producing better with their fixed assets, right? They're utilizing 
their trucks machine equipment better to produce uh, a profit. And the reason for that is because even though their profit is only 12%, proportionately to what their assets are, 110, they're doing more with those assets, right? Than, than company A is. Um, so, so they're doing better on that end. They're using it more efficiently. Then return on equity is what is the return that you're getting as a business owner for having for having the business, right? What is your return on investment or your ROI? So you can see company B is doing better at 111% return for the business. And liquidity is how efficiently and effectively can you pay your bills, your sales tax bill, your payroll bills, uh, materials bills, all of that. And you can see that company B is doing better with this as well. And then debt to equity measures how much uh, me measures if you're over leveraged or not. And you can see that company B is doing slightly better than company A. So at the end of the day, we see that, yeah, company B is producing a higher profit, but you, you know, company B right now, they're running a financially better business than company A, right? Solid, solid. Now let's also compare these two cash flow statements. Um, so company company A um, was collecting, you know, the accounts receivable collection is not as fast as company B, right? They were able to collect their receivables quickly. Um, they have built those relationships. They have a system for it where they're checking their AR weekly, making those phone calls daily. And all of that really adds up um, and, and they're able to collect that faster. Now, they also don't have as much assets, right? Trucks, trailers. So their depreciation is much lower than company A, which is good, right? Um, then if we go down to the second section, cash flow from investing, they were a little bit more frugal with their equipment purchase. They only spent 25,000, company A spent 30. And then the third section, cash from financing. So in total for, for the years, uh, loans, company A paid out 30,000 in loan payments that year, and company B only paid out 23,000 in loan payments. So you can see that um, the ending balance in the, in, the cat, in the business account, you know, for company A, they started off with 20,000 in the bank, they ended with 72,500 in the bank. That's a 52,500 increase, which translates into a 7% net cash flow return, right? Um, company B started out with 20,000 and then it went 91. The cash increased by 71,000. Their net cash flow percentage is 9%. So better than company A. So all again, although company B only had 12% profit, they were able to retain more of that profit. In turn, they had more cash on hand at the end of the year. And, it, and you know, it's important to have a return, right, a net cash flow positive and have a 9%, nine, 9%, you know, we, we recommend 5 to 10% on your net cash flow because you want to be able to take that money and reinvest it back into the business if that's your plans for growth or you invest it personally in real estate, whatever that looks like for you. But this is the whole purpose of having a business is to, you know, be able to grow and, and reinvest back into, into the business. Yeah. And, you know, whether you're looking to just, just operate your business now or sell it in the future, you know, these are the kind of things that, that you know, when, when you look at companies, you know, you, you have to look at, you know, more than maybe just your revenues and expenses. And, you know, this is, this is the reason why. And many of you may have your different things that you're best at within the business. Maybe you're really good at selling. Maybe you're really good, you know, making beautiful projects. But what, what, what we challenge you is to make knowing your numbers and, you know, make, make that a competitive advantage. You know when it when it comes to running your business in your in your market and we'll we'll leave you with just some of these points here um you know which we've kind of gathered just just as you know like i said at the beginning of the presentation just through our experience working with a lot of the companies within this industry um, 
you know, a common thing that we see as as companies scale, you know, you may see other companies, they have maybe office staff and they have different overhead expenses, but but understand that, you know, you want to base your decisions off of what your current system can can support. You know, making more revenue or becoming more efficient in the field is going to allow you to do that. Um, so scale based on what what your numbers are telling you. And a good way to look at that, too, is, you know, looking at things, maybe if you're looking at the profit and loss statement, look at your different line items and your expenses as a percent of your total revenue. So if you're looking to add on someone in the office or take on a certain expense, what percent out of the total revenue is it is it taking up? Right. So. Maybe you are looking to add more people into your office, but um, you know if you if you look at that expense as a percent of revenue, you know maybe it kind of increases at too too high of a rate there. So it's something to to keep track of and and track that trend, um, and use historical information to your advantage. And that's one of the benefits of starting with bookkeeping and then keeping a a, a consistent. Um, you know, keeping that consistent over time because that that historical information will be really valuable for you moving into the next year, right? Like this year, we saw a lot of companies um, in certain markets not get as much snow as you would have liked, right? So thinking about now, okay, maybe some of these cash flow issues that we face this year, how how can we prevent that from happening next year? Mm. Um, That's you good. Know, how do these numbers look? compared to last year where snow was a little bit better, how are we going to have to adjust for the rest of the season now based off of that? So using some of that information to, to your advantage. Um, and then also it's great to get really granular into things and see, Oh, my, my insurance expense went up by this percentage or, um, you know, some, some of the overhead line items, but understand that, you know, you want to, if, if your total labor between your administrative health and and the employees in the field make up 40 to 50 percent of, of the total revenue, you want to make that a priority. And and you and you want to focus on that because that's that's one of the realities of of this industry. Um, you know, and it's great to, to, to cut expenses and think about, OK, how how lean can we be? But there's ultimately typically a lot more opportunity when it comes to you know, growing the business revenue wise and um, becoming more efficient in the field um, than there is trying to cut on insurance costs every, every couple months. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, also don't get too intimidated by looking at the numbers too, because sometimes the, the answer to what's going on within the numbers is obvious. And it's because maybe you changed up some of the, some of your systems or maybe your estimating process, or maybe you're starting to do more material intensive jobs instead of doing more reoccurring work and try to track those different changes that you're making in the business and look at the financials and look at how, you know, what, what the outcomes are there, because you can use that to, um, you know, adjust for, for the future. And, It'll help to show you whether your plan, you know, is 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 working out or not. Um, and sometimes, you know, you may look and you may think that it's all a pricing issue, right? You you know, I'm going to increase pricing this year, or maybe you know, you know, I'm tired. Be, I'm tired of these, you know, the employees. You know, I feel like they should be working more efficiently. Whatever it is, and it doesn't necessarily need to be either or. You can come up with a combined strategy with um, you know, whether it's finding ways to increase efficiency, but also making sure to increase pricing, especially with inflation and increased, um, you know, cost of doing business. And point, point number six, so every company optimizes in their own way. So when you're talking to someone to maybe a, another local business owner, or you're in a Facebook group or a forum, and, you know, people are talking about a certain profit margin or a way that they do things, you know, understand that every company is different, right? One company, they may be really efficient in the field, but administratively, they may not be as efficient, right? But at the end of the day, they may be making the same net profit as you. So thinking about what, what you do best as a company and, um, 
you know, don't don't necessarily get get discouraged over different things because you know everyone has their strengths. And the last point here, you know, just as Carla with some of the ratios that she was going over, it you know kind of compares some of the metrics to your net profit and on and a main example of this I'd say is within your marketing investment, um, you know, or or other investments that you make into your company. You want to ultimately see what effect is it having on net profit, not just revenue, right? Because that's really what's going to enable you to, if you do want to continue to grow the company, to invest back into your company and support your family and, you know, be able to really take this business into the future. As, as Brian said, you know, there's, there's a difference between being able to operate the business for a few years versus what is that long-term strategy that's going to get you through downturns or, you know, if your key employee leaves um, or maybe if, you know, maybe if your wife or partner gets pregnant, right? So thinking about all, all those different things that, that are happening in your life and, you know, how, you know, you know, how are you going to be able to, you know, support that moving forward? So, and uh, you know, be, being profitable, taking into account some of these things that we discussed today is going to, you know, help you kind of get to that point. Couldn't have said it better, man. You guys are awesome. That's why I love uh, partnering with you guys. Oh, hey, we got another slide. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. This is, you know, this is basically it, Brian. And, um, you know, for as, uh, you know, if for for those of you that that made it through an entire presentation about accounting, um, you do get Brian's offer of, uh, you know, get uh, $200 off too. Awesome, man. And a ton of you guys have been taking advantage of that. Uh, I'm super excited about giving you guys resources out there that you can use to grow your company. If you need a bookkeeper, check out Cycle CPA. I think they do fantastic work. I know they do because I've we've we've held each other both to uh, our feet to the uh, to the coals, making sure that it's a high integrity uh, relationship for real. I, I don't want to just promote anybody out there. Uh, these guys have been just such a class act, and you guys did such a great job at LAL. I know dozens and dozens of people got to uh, have conversations with you guys in between your presentation uh, that day last November and nothing but great feedback from everybody that I have had the chance to catch up that got to talk to you guys. Um, if you guys are struggling with this stuff or you're you're excited about going to the next level and just hiring a bookkeeper, um, I would say like there's like the three horsemen to like help you with your back end of your company. At least this is what my story is. There's a payroll company. Uh, a CPA, and then a bookkeeper. And the data that your CPA is going to typically use is going to be directly related to all the info you get from your payroll people, and even more so from your bookkeeper. So a good tax accountant and CPA, there's a lot of things that they're going to offer and do for you. But a bunch of that data is going to be derived from your books. And you have to have good books. I, I can't implore you guys enough. And so Hey, it's a busy time of the year. It's the spring rush. The schedule is going crazy. I get it. Um, but don't wait. And, and I don't have a picture. I'm just telling you guys, don't wait until November, December this year to sign up with a bookkeeper, whether it's Cycle or somebody in your small town or your don't go with your mom or your brother or sister-in-law. Okay. Like that's not a good bookkeeper unless they're like accounting certified and QuickBooks certified and all this other mess. But my point is don't wait until don't kick the can to September, October, November. Like, think about it. Like, if your business is struggling for cash and profitability now, and you're saying, I'm gonna wait six months until I get this figured out, like that makes no sense to me. Like, why wait until September, October, November to connect the dots and see if you're actually profitable on the work you're gonna do for the rest of the season? So Hey, if you can only give these guys two or three hours a month and you're just going to on-ramp slowly and then two, three hours and just make a dedicated, hey, Thursday morning from nine to 10, I'm going to get with these guys once a month or uh, once or twice a month until I on-ramp and get things cleaned up. Please, I, I just, I, I plead just for your guys' sanity, like make it a priority. Uh, the lawns can wait. The mulch job can wait. It'll all get done. Work a couple extra hours one evening, whatever you got to do. If you got to invert your schedule, uh, we've all been there. But don't dismiss all this great info for 30 minutes and just saying, hey, that's nice. Like having a quality bookkeeper and understanding these documents 
has changed my life more than cutting grass or mulch or the X's and O's of the business. Okay. Like the back end office work has made us better business people. Right. And that's changed our life, our lifestyle. Okay. So I really implore you guys to connect the, uh, your caboose with uh, Carla and Joseph. I think they're some of the best. Um, I just want to say thank you guys for putting this whole presentation together. You guys are just always crushing it. Thank you guys so much for uh, taking care of all the people that um, have signed up with you guys. And uh, I'm hearing nothing but great feedback again. So it, that's that's kind of what I got. No no hard pitch here. Um, anything you guys want to add in while we got you? But uh, as always, appreciate what you guys got going on. No, thank you, Brian. And, you know, yeah, definitely, you know, if you watch this presentation, feel feel free to reach out. You know, I think the, the bookkeeping piece, fortunately, is one of the easiest things to kind of outsource, especially as you're kind of, you know, getting started and ramping up your company. Um, it's, it is nice in that way with the different technology now with QuickBooks online. And um, so definitely, definitely take advantage of that. Um, but, you know, it was, had a great time today. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, thank you. For sure. Well, really quick, uh, a lot of you guys know we wrote the book zero to 100 K. This is the Spanish version, which I'm super excited about. Talk a lot about knowing your numbers in this book. Uh, but I just want to give one other quick thank you to uh, Carla she helped me uh, with translating some of the documents that you guys can get at launchpreneuracademy.com, uh, our Spanish resources. Uh, she didn't do the book because she's a busy professional and I wasn't going to throw that on her desk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to although, be fair, I read over it and everything was perfect. So. Really? Okay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, but um, the subcontractor agreement, the applications, uh, there's some Spanish resources that a lot of you guys were requesting. Uh, Carla is able, uh, bilingual, able to help. Uh, our Hispanic crowd, big time. And uh, so big thank you. I just want to say to you, Carla, uh, for helping translate all those documents and uh, and checking our work because I don't speak Spanish. So who knows what they would have said, right? If I did it. So <laughs> <laughs> no, That's thank all. you for, for putting the time and research into making something like this for the um, Hispanic community. I think it's something that is needed. And a lot of um, that community is just starting off with the business, never had a business before. And no one in their family has a business. And so I'm, right. I'm sure it'll help out so many people. So grateful, Amen. grateful for that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Amen. We, uh, my Hispanic friends out there, there's some of the hardest working people I know. Um, I want them to realize like the American dream. It's not the, uh, American dream is not like America. It's, it's a worldwide dream guys. So own your own business and to, you know, build something for you and your family and, uh, I want to just show a little love to my Hispanic crowd out there with uh, the book and then all the Spanish uh, resources lately at Launchpreneur Academy. So, but um, that's what I got. Appreciate you guys uh, listening to the uh, the presentation. Hopefully this was helpful. Leave me some comments down below. If if you guys found um, uh, some value in this, maybe we can get Carl and Joseph back on in a month or two once they catch their breath and uh, maybe we can do a little uh, mid-season check-in. But um, this stuff is important and uh, don't forget to check out the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. I'll try to leave a link in the description. Um, whatever. It's all extra credit, but it's a great read. And then also we have the knowing your numbers profitability calculator uh, tool that we built at launchpreneuracademy.com. Like you can plug all of your numbers in if you don't have a high-end CRM and you can plug all that stuff in there to start spitting out some of these numbers and then take that and cross compare with your bookkeeper. So I'll leave a link in the description and uh, maybe a little promo code there to save you guys a few bucks as well. So uh, Carla, Joseph, that's all I got. You guys have a beautiful day. Thank you uh, so much for all your time and uh, we appreciate you and we'll be checking in soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks. All right, guys. You betcha. Have a great day.